I don't know what that's about, but let me give you, um, do you see um, right here, it says copy live stream URL up top? Do you see that or no? No, okay, then I'll put that in our Telegram just so folks know. Okay. I want to start with a little music because that's such a kernel thing to start these off with music. But you know. Um so you know um quadratic friends. Um I just put the link in the telegram so you can share it with me. I thought you would be able to see um, the prompt here and you copy them. I just want to see if uh, Maika comes back in. I don't want her to be a... Uh... Meanwhile, I'm gonna play a little music and get for a couple of minutes. Come back in. Playing from Hanifa while we just iPhone. Thank you. 
Charles Peterson. Welcome to the bank. All right. Okay. So uh, Monica's trying to get back in. And I think the reason why I kicked her out, I think when streaming, um, it only allows four windows, which is weird. <laughs> I'm, that's, that, that's what I'm guessing. Cause she says she's trying to get back in, but Randy bowed out. So I'm, I'm hoping that that fixes the problem. If you need me to <laughs> I'll dip. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, is it? I, I'm the only thing that um I haven't tried because I've never streamed via. This is like a new thing they have. Um, I just want to make sure that you can still watch it. But like, is there like a green room or something? You know how like in <laughs> I don't know like you know. I just want to make sure. I'm not sure. Well, I can see the stream on YouTube. All right, let me see what happens. I'm going to say, it says remove contestant from the call. I'm going to see, um, okay, let's do this. I'm going to press this button before I do that. If you get thrown out, please join us via YouTube. I put the link in our quadratic friends, you know, our telegram all in. Um, but if you are still watching for some reason, <laughs> I, I got to figure that out, girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. It's all okay. good. All right, all right. No, 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 and is she being abusive? No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> that is not what I'm saying. Hold on. <laughs> ah, maybe. Okay. Ah, I think I figured it out. Um, you have this pin thing. I think that helps you focus on who you want to focus on. All right, let's, let's, let's see what happens. Let me stop this, what's going on in the background. Let's just begin. Worst case scenario, if, if some reason Monica can't come back on, I'll just give her another spot. Um, and I, I'll just have to apologize. Um, okay. All right, so let's begin when I start recording at three, two, And uh, yikes. Okay. Hey, welcome everyone. My name is my name is Hanifa uh, Walida, and I'm so excited to come to you today because um I have ah great, she, she's getting back in. All right. So we're all coming. <laughs> Wonderful. Yay, yay. Oh my God. So we have everyone here. All right. So we have started recording and we are streaming live. Um, we do employ you to share the uh, the stream. You know, it's in our Telegram. Um, also, it's uh, on YouTube. Um, just to share out so people know what we're doing here. So, what we are we doing here? All right. So, this is a kernel conversation. Um, if you don't know what kernel is, kernel is a Web3 incubator. All right. Most people know what an incubator or accelerator um, is. This is a Web3 one. <laughs> um, if you don't know what Web3 is, Web1 was the internet, Web2 was streaming, and here we are with Web3 blockchain, all right? And there's so much that we can do with that. Um, and like the past waves of Web, um, traditional folks have always been at the forefront of the technology um, and what is done with the technology. What Web3 allows us to do is to broaden that scope of folks who can get into this thing and make things happen for their own communities all right or the things that are closest to their heart which is in many cases never like what the traditional folks think is going on right <laughs> or it's valuable right so um kernel um i just want to back out backtrack a little bit kernel it's a great incubator, not just because it's focused on Web3 projects, but it's their approach to Web3. They are not worried about how much money you have or who you know or even what your roadmap is. They're concerned on the why. Why are you here? With all of this technology, all right, we don't want to uh, recreate the wheel. We, we don't want to repeat ourselves um, and how technology has been used slash abused in the past. Um, so Kernel really focuses on people. Um, not everyone is in technology, not everyone codes, not everyone, uh, or rather, or better said, people come from all facets of life um, and interests um, and, and occupations. 
and they come together to either interested in Web3 or they're already in Web3 and they want to develop a project. So that is Kernel. What we're in now is a Kernel Conversations, um, and that is basically getting people together, um, what we call the Juntos, um, getting folks together around a certain topic um, and just have an open discussion, all right? Um, this particular topic is called GR15 DEI Grants We Love. What does that mean? So GR15 simply means the Gitcoin granting round, the 15th one. Gitcoin, if you're not aware, um, is a Web3 funding platform um, that uses quadratic funding. Now, <clears throat> usually when you say quadratic, <laughs> people are like, okay, you know, we have another welcome. Great, another guest. Um, usually when we say quadratic, uh, folks kind of like right, say, oh my gosh, what is that? Welcome, Sabian. We have started, we are streaming, and we are recording. Um, so essentially all that means is that it's a more of a democratic means of um, mute you, please mute every, when you come in, just please mute yourself. Um, it's a more of a democratic means of funding. Now we know traditional uh, ways to fund projects. We have VCs, <clears throat> we have Kickstarter, but those are really based on how much money you have coming into this. Quadratic uh, funding is based on how many people actually support your project. So whether they donate $1,000, $100, or $80, all of that is weighted or matched quadratically to be more based on how many people are saying, I want this project to exist in the world. So the folks we have here um, uh, today, uh, they are Gitcoin uh, grantees, right? Um, Gitcoin um, granting round 15, it started on the 7th and it ends this Thursday. So we're here to talk about what they're doing, uh, or rather DEI, it stands for Diversity, um, Equity and Inclusion. I put the quotes up, because I'm not a fan of those words, but essentially what that means is women buy PAQ grants. Either the people are heading them up or the project itself is to serve those communities, all right? So it can be wide ranging, but those are the, the two uh, uh, parameters to be DEI. So we're focusing on DEI um, grants today and tomorrow. Um, and in Tuesday, um, Wednesday is more so music uh, grants. All right, so let me introduce um, folks. We have Maika Hurst, yay. All right, one second. Let me just get my notes out, y'all, because yeah, we need those things. All right. Um, and uh, Maika um, has something. I am the master of my. Can you, I'm sorry. Why did it stop the whole thing? I'm the master of my world, I believe. Uh, it says, my, I'm the master of my own domain. I'm sorry. And then it's the world's longest title, and I apologize because I literally did not understand who I was writing for. I was like, oh, that's giant. Um, but essentially, the title actually goes on to say self-sovereignty, self self-determination, and self-efficacy um, following domestic violence. Um, I have found over the past, since the 7th, that I can be the most awkward person in the room by immediately bringing up domestic violence and create dead silence. So if there's ever a bunch of people talking and you want them to be quiet, say the words domestic violence and everyone shuts up. Um, oh my gosh, that's super amazing. effective. Well, I'll um, to go before you go into it, my God, <clears throat> people are coming in. I just want to make sure you get them in here. Excuse me, I got a little food that went out on pipe. But I also want to um, introduce Path, who has uh, another grant called Take Up Space. So what I'm going to do, for folks just coming in, let me just refresh real quick and understand that we are streaming. I will put the streaming um, URL in the chat. I'm going to encourage everyone to share that, whether in, in your social media, whatever social media you prefer, so we can get folks in here to know what's going on. And what is going on? Um, it's we're talking about Gitcoin grants, in particular diversity, equity, um, and inclusion grants. This is going to be a four day series to really profile these grants. Oh, great. More kernel folks are coming in. I'm loving it. I'm not loving it. Right on the house. Um, we're focusing on these grants um, because DEI is a fairly new um, section of Gitcoin grants. And we want to not only support these grants, 
We want to know what else is going in the world um, that may pertain more so to um, communities who are traditionally not funded um, in tech spaces, right? So um, if you're not familiar with Gitcoin, Gitcoin is um, a Web3 funding platform using quadratic um, funding. Um, and, and simply what that means is that funding is based more um, democratically. So it's not about how much someone is bringing to the table. It's about how many people actually want to support your project and, and see it in the world. And they do some funny math. <laughs> and so $1 can equal $75 or $100 can equal $500. And all of that can go up and down based on how many people are just donating whatever they have. Hello. To, I'm sorry. Yes, this is going to mute while I do this. And we'll have time for Hello. Q&A. Okay. All right. We're going to mute. Okay. You may have to actually um, actually leave. Go. <laughs> all right. So that's why we're here. So we have um, a couple of incredible um, grants here. Preta, fugida, pobre, filha da puta. Yes, here we go. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs> so we have a couple of uh, incredible uh, grants here, and they are DEI, as in diversity, equity, inclusion grants. Um, and uh, and they're going to talk about what they're doing. Um, I'm introducing them. I love it more people. Um, uh, Maya Mayaka uh, Hurst and Pat um, Evera. Uh, Mayaka just kind of introduce herself, and then we're going to have Pat introduce their self, um, and then we're going to dive into what each grant is actually trying to bring forth in the world. All right, so Pat, just quickly introduce. Um, overview of what take up space. <laughs> Sorry for you. Know, that happens when you know you do things live sometimes. So I apologize for that. All right. Hi everyone. I'm slightly scared. We're about to get hate crimed. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um. My name is Pat, um, so I'm the co-founder of Take Up Space, um, and yeah, I'm excited to be chatting with some awesome fellow grantees, this is my first time using Gitcoin and understanding all that is quadratic funding. Um, I also just want to make a note just to um, make sure we're speaking super clearly. Uh, my friend Sabian's in the crowd, he's amazing, um, he's also deaf. So just making sure we're speaking as clear as we can because I've turned the captions on and they are whack. So <laughs> just just uh yeah, wanted to point that out. But yeah, really um looking forward to this conversation. All right. Um so let's start um with Mayaka. Again, just for those folks who just came into the stage. <laughs> I really haven't publicly shared this thing, so that's weird. Um, anyway. Don't worry about that. If you get folks like this, um, I it is my duty to kick them out. Just keep talking, all right? Um, so, Michael, just quickly introduce yourself for the new folks who came in and then dive into all that you're trying to bring into the world. Okay. Hi, my name is Maya um, as I was saying before, I actually have a grant on Gitcoin that is discussing domestic violence, which apparently is the most awkward um, and silencing, silence producing topic possible. Hello. Um, Hello. Do it's you not just English? about like domestic violence awareness. I think we all are aware of what domestic violence is. And according to my anecdotal experiences and what Hello. the research shows. Um, most, most women, um, it's not exclusively women, so I just want to put that out there. I'm aware that it happens to everyone and also um, that it's kind of a binary way to speak about it. And so my apologies for that, but the research is mostly presented in that way. But most women have experienced domestic violence or assault in one form or another, um, sexual, verbal, emotional, um, during the course of their life. Um, but our, so our grant is not about bringing awareness to that. It is about building a platform using abstract expressionist art 
and art therapy strategies and techniques to recover from domestic violence, um, to process trauma, and to rebuild your identity after you've gone through a really oppressive time period. Of course, as I think about what that means, it really is about identity and establishing who you are and the boundaries and processing your life experiences that is expansive to many more people than just who has gone through domestic violence. Um, my hope is that in the future, what we will have is a platform where anyone who feels like they want to use art as a mode of healing can come to the space and use the exercises for them for whatever they've gone through. Um, we also will have galleries where people can in an anonymous way present their work and also a journal feature where they can write about their story either for themselves alone or they can choose to make it public because it's very empowering to people that are stuck to read who has gotten out how they got out and that there's life on the other side i um experienced that myself i think there's a lot of oversimplification about what domestic violence looks like and how you can extract yourself from that. People who haven't been in that situation don't understand that when people are physically damaged the most or murdered is when they either ha are trying to leave or have just left. And they're, I mean, and murder is on the table. Like that's a real thing. Um, and so extracting yourself is not just a matter of, you know, having a plan, having your finances in place, um, having support. It's actually that your physical body will be in danger. It will. Um, and the two mechanisms that are used most often to keep people in place are threat of damage to your children um, and that you will just basically be destitute and alone. Um, so our solution, the solution that I found once, I mean, building up my personal understanding of myself and also um, what options were available to me. I know it may sound crazy to some people, but I was raised with very little autonomy. Um, and I never understood um, until I was quite a ways along in my life, over 30, before I realized that I can just cut someone off and just say, I'm leaving, that's it. There's no conversation. I don't need to entertain your discussion or your arguments. This is my line and we're all done. Um, so developing that sense of self took me time because I never had that. Um, I was very successful professionally, but personally, I just didn't have those boundaries and didn't have the practice. So what I found was that on the canvas, I was able to start expressing my emotions. And I know it sounds pretty abstract. Um, if you haven't experienced it, and we are at the very beginning, so the lessons are not written out, but to put your pro to put your trauma on the canvas and then in abstract art we work in layers so let's say we take the most damaging experience you've been through and you put it on the canvas in whatever way is working for you in the moment maybe it's a lot of really energetic you know move like marks that you're putting on the page maybe it's really dark colors you know maybe it is you red for blood it's, you know I don't know what's going to come up for each person but then we use layers and begin to like overwrite that and we say this is a part of this canvas but it is now fading to the back and I can choose to overwrite with beauty and it will still show through the trauma or the darker things and it actually adds to the texture of the piece but it isn't what's demanding our atten attention and you begin to understand like 
you're just working it out on the canvas and practicing that and it's translatable to real life and of course it will be accompanied by conversation and support and i i happen to be at my shop today where i have um some pieces so i can actually give you guys like a little bit of a visual demonstration like we'll go to this piece this piece like you see the masking that comes over and then you're using like mark making and there's all of this that's happening in the background and maybe you are using like words maybe you've written words you know in a scribbly way so that it's just for you not for other people um but then you just come with those layers and that's just one example and we'll use like collaging to start to identify identity a lot of times when you are in a deeply <laughs> a deeply dysfunctional relationship you lose your identity you are taking on the likes and dislikes of the person that is controlling your space um so we will begin to work on that like what do you like what colors are good for you what brings you peace what brings you joy what do you see yourself doing in the future and so and so that's what we're building so i, I do have a question um because we had already shared um i i used to do marketing for uh, um uh, a, a, a dv um, organization in in massachusetts um and really got intimate with all the ways that it can show up i'm curious um how because this is the whole conversation of in web3 how we want to i like to say shape it in our own image right and when i say our as far as everyone else who traditionally have not been supported in all the previous ways of, of tech basically the rest of the world right um not just race wise but experience wise right so i'm, I'm curious how do you see in your platform specifically um showing up or how do you see web3 and all that it can be um being a, a route to reach your your audience or your target and just and define who that is well as you know like i kind of came into this at the last minute and so <laughs> some of those things are not yet clear um where i live we have a lot of indigenous people um, and as most of us are aware, black and indigenous women are disproportionately affected by domestic violence. I am waiting right now for one of my friends to get back who is a Navajo two spirit person and an artist. And I need to have more conversations. Honestly, I need to find out more about what are gonna be the most effective ways to reach the people who needs this information the most. So just to be honest, like I'm not sure yet, but I'm, I'm resourceful and very persistent and we will figure it out. And hopefully we will gain partners as we go along because for sure, I am not the right person to speak to everyone's experience. So I need, I need other people and we will figure that out. So um, I'm glad that you said that because, um, and I'm glad that uh, I, I believe some Colonel folks are in the room because that actually what Colonel was for. Before. Everyone in Kernel doesn't know what the hell they're gonna do as far as Web three, <laughs> you know. In part, they're in there to learn that. So one, I wanna, I wanna encourage you to apply for the next um, uh, round of Kernel uh, um, fellows um, because once you're in, you're always in. So it's just a really group, a good group of folks to really try and flesh that out and figure it out. But also, it says um, something about Gitcoin that every project coming in. Because you have to apply to Gitcoin, just so you know, uh, and not every project is um, accepted. Um, but again, the premise is to bring people into the Web3 ethos um, that is just not locked into the same rhythm in which we've been doing, you know, or engaging with technology. Um, so I'm really like just excited to see where you go with this and just starting off, even if it's on a Web2 platform, seeing what how Web3, and you know, a lot of times when we say Web3, a lot of people like associated directly with the blockchain. Um, I'm sorry, this GT person is trying to come up with a lot of people. I don't know what that's about. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm about, you know what? How about, how about I let you in and then, 
and then kick you out. I don't know what that's about. Sorry again, folks. Um, I'm, I'm, this is a, me kind of using Google Meets. I, maybe there's a way I should make this more private and we can avoid that. So I apologize to my, to my folks here. Um, um, anyway, so I, I was just saying that I, wa I want to encourage you to do that. But the, um, it also says about um, Gitcoin um, grants. So we are also talking about grants in one second, please. Um, we are talking a lot about, we're we talking about Gitcoin grants and the possibilities in funding um, projects like yours um, and PATHs who are about to um, address um, and getting them into the overall ecosystem of what we define as Web3 as we define it, right? All right, so, um, and I, I just let you know the folks who are listening in, um, uh, as uh, these folks talk about their uh, projects, there will be a point you can open your mic and, and ask questions. And I'm sure they would appreciate the questions. Um, Pal, open your mic. And uh, please tell us what Take Up Space is, who it's for, and um, how you're trying to mess up the game with it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so Take Up Space um, is essentially a community for BIPOC and LGBTQ people. Um, and the reason we are in Web3 is because we see the opportunity that... <laughs> A little song. I'm just saying, I apologize for these interruptions. Um, I think there is a way I can privatize this, so you either have the link or not. Um, so I just apologize those who might be just coming in just to be rude. No, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I have really like hectic ADHD, so every time someone interrupts, I'm like, no, what are you saying? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, no, but take up space, we're a community for. BIPOC and LGBTQ people, um, and we're in Web3 because we see the opportunity that the space has um, on kind of rewriting <clears throat> the systems that have uh, failed those communities in the past. So um, I kind of, uh, you know, was really hesitant myself learning about Web3 and crypto and NFTs um, purely because I didn't see myself represented in the space and it took my wife like ages to try and convince me and then it, it wasn't until she was like <clears throat> i think i said like i don't see myself in this space i don't think i'm supposed to be in this space and she's like that's exactly why people like you should be in this space uh to be that like visibility and representation so um yeah, that's kind of how we started out and we initially started out as an nft community so we launched an NFT project in April. Um, we kind of kicked off the decline into the bear market. So <laughs> that was fun. Um, but a ton of learnings and uh, in, in the art itself with the NFT collection, um, my wife designed that and we really wanted to showcase queer people of color, especially because I hadn't really seen those folks represented um, in art in a space and we wanted to make the art really, um, you know, joyful and queer and fun and um, and very diverse as well. Um, so we kind of started off on that trajectory and the NFTs were essentially a membership pass um, to our community and to our programming. And really the core of what we want to build and continue to build um, is a curriculum for uh, future diverse leaders. This kind of came from my own um, journey as like a black queer neurodivergent person becoming um, a leader for the first time. So just over a year ago, I started running a digital marketing agency. Um, and it was through that process that uh, I went through a ton of, I guess, imposter syndrome, um, but also realizing it wasn't just in my own head. It was the fact that I had never seen someone like me running an agency or in a leadership position um especially you know using they them pronouns um i felt uncomfortable correcting people and i thought if i feel like this like imagine how 
people who don't have these positions of power. So that is kind of what sparked the need to create basically like masterclass, but intersectional. Like how can we bring diverse leaders from across the globe? Because, you know, we can speak on a lot more things than diversity and inclusion. We are marketing gurus and, you know, strategists and healers and just, uh, you know, a huge range of skills and uh, gifts that we have um, for the world. So really wanted to bring those people together and have them inspire and educate our community. So that was kind of the the cornerstone for Take Up Space and the NFT side. And over the last, you know, few months, we've really continued to expand. I think that's the beauty of having uh, a powerful why and ours is to empower queer people of color and BIPOC LGBTQ more broadly. Um, the beauty of that is the what and the how you do that can continue to evolve and change. So for us, after a few months of launching our NFTs and growing our community, um, we we realized it was very slow <laughs> because a lot of our people are not in the space yet. So we were like, oh, okay, let us zoom out a little bit. Um, and we launched a completely free introduction to Web3 course. Um, and this was like a four week interactive course. We brought again, diverse leaders in Web3 together to film webinars. Um, and we really wanted to make this accessible to everyone to just have a safe space to learn Web3 in a very inclusive um, community. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of one way we, we were able to, I guess, lean more into this public goods, um, which is a term that I'm only recently <laughs> learning about. Um, and more recently, uh, we've been looking at ways we can continue to be a bridge from Web 2 to Web 3 uh, and have really started to go down the, the road of storytelling and media and what is the, um, how can we reinvent, you know, storytelling and media in, in Web 3. There's a very powerful statistic, which is from the US, but I, uh, I have a feeling it's probably similar in the UK and where I'm from in Australia, which is 90% of the media is uh, owned by five different media companies. And you can you can see in the media when we're not represented, when we're not visible, again, it's the same as the issues that we have at a leadership um, or you know C-suite position, we're not seeing ourselves. So how can we use Web3 to amplify diverse voices, tell untold stories? So yeah, I think it's really, it's really expansive, the space. As I said, if you have a strong why, you can continue to expand your organization and your initiatives as long as they're kind of aligning with with that um, bigger piece of the puzzle. So yeah, I'm really excited to see where we go in more of this media space um, and continuing to bridge that gap between Web 2 and Web 3 and just make sure that our people are actually here uh, so we, we don't continue to get left behind again. <laughs> Okay, so this has been, I, I originally got in a space at the top of 21 and I was the only one little like me, <laughs> you know, um, and, but it, it, well, I can't, I can't quite say that. It, and I wasn't the only queer person in all of Web3, but I appreciate this initiative because um, that is a community that I want to get in here and not just to count heads, like diversity heads, like, oh, we got 10% queer folks in Web3. No, 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 no. The point is to get the perspective, because a queer perspective, a BIPOC perspective, we, we have, we see everything that's on your blind side, right? So that helps, and I'm gonna put women in that too, we see everything that's on your blind side. So that is the importance of getting folks in. Now, a friend of mine, who's actually a part of my project, um, uh, Jasper James uh, is taking um, your course. Um, there um, ha happened to be uh, a, a co-chair of Northern California ACLU, and we reconnected in the on Twitter of all places um, because they were trying to find uh, how could they bring and use Web three into the overall fight, right? Um, and that's how we connected, but uh, they are the ones who introduced me to Take Up Space um, to actually learn what is this about. So almost like Take Up Space is almost like a kernel, um, kind of a, a, a place where you can learn about uh, what Web3 is, um, be supported in, how, in 
supported in 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 fashioning and pushing forward your vision, right? Um, and, and that's just like incredible. Um, I want to um, I want to uh, whether you want to open your mic or shoot us um, a chat. I just want to give people um, uh, who are in our audience. Um, to ask questions about any one of these um, initiatives. Um, also, you should know I put everyone's grant um, link in the um, in the chat. Uh, we definitely want to um, support them. And again, uh, if you weren't here earlier, um, these are Gitcoin grants, meaning that it's not about how much you donate, it's about you donate. So if you have a dollar, great. You got five dollars, wonderful. You got ten dollars, great. You got more than that, that's beautiful. It's all weighted um, based on just the popularity, if you will, of a project. Um, and thank you, uh, Nash, uh, for your comments um, earlier. Yes, they are great folks. I'm doing great things. <laughs> so, but we definitely want to um, promote, uh, you know, all that they're doing. So I'm curious if anyone um, in the audience has questions or even comments um, based on what's been presented. All right, so Pav is actually asking, Mike, <laughs> where's the art um, you were talking about? Yes. Yeah. Just grabbing it. So this is our, um, it's a generative art collection. Um, so they, these are our change makers. Uh, we believe that everyone can be a change maker and should be empowered to create change. So we, yeah, if you, if you take a look, you can see they're very cute. We affectionately call them um, our little dudes. Sabian has one called Noobs. Very, very cool. Um, but yeah, we, we honestly, like my partner, um, like took photos of, of me and my friends and different people that we know and love to literally incorporate them in the art. Like I didn't see anyone with like shaved sides and a curly, a curly front. I didn't see anyone with locks, Bantu knots. Like we wanted to make sure we were really making sure we were representing like the black community and also the queer community. Probably my favorite trait is um, rainbow dungarees. Uh, which are super cute. So yeah, thank you for, for asking. A lot of people don't know we have NFTs. <laughs> so um, yeah, I appreciate you asking that. <laughs> I'm so excited. Are they corduroy as well? <laughs> oh my gosh, um, Nash has a question. So please, Nash, please open your mic and, and ask your question. Um, hi everyone. Um, so thanks again, Path. Um, I recently connected with Path on the Web3 Twitter spaces. I've just been kind of lurking around, um, really interested with some of the things that she's talking about. And um, again, just exploring some of the, um, the Gitcoin uh, grants that you guys have. I guess today was kind of like the day that I was like, what is Path always talking about? You know, I was like, okay, fine. There's a, there's a link. I might as well just go in and figure it out. So I think, um, I've gotten like a, a better understanding of what everything is going on. Um, a little bit about by myself. My name is Nash. I am based in Cape Town, South Africa. And essentially, uh, I'm working on a project similar to some of the issues that you guys have. So essentially, we're looking to close the digital divide within some of the African youth. So by providing them skills within the Web3 space. And again, so the general idea of the digital divide in Africa is that everyone needs laptops, computers, and internet access. Now, the major issue right now is that we all have that now. We passed the point where everyone needs a phone or a laptop. Every young person actually has access to all these things. But what we see now is that most of the people are spending a lot of their time on TikTok. And, you know, besides the actual uh, issues we're trying to solve. So again, um, I recently started a, a startup called Gamepad Africa, which essentially onboards a lot of the young adolescents to Web3 using play to earn games, Web3, and just basically what we look at the di digital divide now is basically the necessary information to be able to use the technology we've long been longing for. So um, yeah, essentially just wanted to introduce myself and say thanks for uh, Pat for intro, uh, introducing me to this great initiative. And I hope to connect with everyone here. I'll post my Twitter down below. And again, um, just to everyone, everyone who's working on everything, do look out for my donation. I think uh, Gamepad Africa would like to support you guys in any way. And I do appreciate the fact that there isn't um, a dollar amount limitation. So I think it's, it's a great opportunity to be able to do something without having to say, oh, I don't have maybe $100 for the NFT and that kind of thing.
So um, I really appreciate this. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's all about it for me. Hopefully, I also am looking into applying for a Gitcoin grant to be able to execute some of these things. So definitely looking to connect with you guys. It's been a really great, insightful um, uh, interview. It's like 9 p.m. To here. And I basically was like, okay, there's a link. It seems to be happening right now. And I joined. And luckily, my mic was off when I joined. So that's great. <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. Smash, I, I definitely want to encourage you to come to uh, tomorrow's um, uh, forum here. Um, because 40 Acres, are, um, which is a, an initiative here um, in America, and they have focused on the exact same thing, but for more rural um, areas of America, um, more uh, or, or just uh, Black folks in general, in particular, uh, uh, Black populations in America that literally don't have access, <laughs> you know, um, as far as, you know, laptops and things like that because of, you know, uh, just the, the, the divide in wealth. But um, but also a lot of what you're talking about. So I think you two could actually connect um, and I don't know create something. Um, cause they are about it there, and I would also encourage you to join their DAO because um, they are global, um, even though they're they're mostly focused in America. But the initiative is the same. Um, so I think you can um, do some sort of exchange and just help one another out. And that's tomorrow at two or nine p.m. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks sure enough. Much. Sure enough. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Um, I had a thought, um, but it flew out the window. Um, this and I'll, while it comes back to me in the front door, it's going to come in. I'm sure it's going to come back to me. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? I do. Um, so the question I have. So again, really great projects. And for anyone who may be watching this, I'm going to talk about my project tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. Um, how can we best support the things that you are doing? I know that you have your Gitcoin grant, but in a week, that's going to be done and over with. What else can we do to support you? What is it that you need so we can go ahead and start to get these resources for you? Excellent question. Um, Y'all can open your mic at any time and answer it. Okay. I'll, okay, I'll jump in. <laughs> Thank you, Micah. Uh, love that question, um, Contessa. Yeah, I think, you know, Gitcoin, this experience has been amazing because it has really reduced the barrier to entry for people who want to support um and has has really showcased you know back when the matching was was popping off you know it was like a dollar was 154 dollars and um the, the power there is amazing so uh obviously as as we know that is coming to a close um we will definitely be back for gr16 bigger and better um and straight out the gates instead of me doing the application at 3 a.m which is what i did this time but apart from that obviously I've shared the NFTs, um, but really, I think that the biggest thing is being involved in the community. Um, we have a group of contributors um, and we have two workstations, uh, brand partnerships and marketing um, and content and writing. So as we, as I kind of mentioned in um, my previous um, spiel, uh, a big focus of ours is growing take up space media so having amazing like writers, contributors um, who have a story to tell. Um, we have a TUS token, take up space token at the moment. And um, until we hopefully get even more funding for Gitcoin, um, that is how we're compensating our contributors. So for anyone who is BIPOC, LGBTQ in uh, underrepresented communities um, and who is a writer or a content creator, um, that is one way that you can get involved. It doesn't, you don't have to be making content about Web3. Um, as I said, we want to be a bridge from Web2 to Web3. So ideally, we're creating a platform that from the in, like outside in, you might just see us as a queer or black um, like lifestyle content brand. And then as you kind of wade through, you're like, oh, they're powered by Web3. And then it's kind of introducing you to it 
um, in, in more of a subtle way. So that is one, one way absolutely to contribute. Um, if you are a writer or a creator, or if you just love um, marketing um, or are a bit of a, have a bit of a strategy brain, we could always use you in a, a brainstorm call to, you know, get some ideas flowing. Um, so yeah, that there are some, some ways that you can support and follow us on Twitter, you know, give us a retweet. That's always nice as well. <laughs> Micah. Well, first, before I don't have the mic again, Path, the space that you had the other day with the woman who was the Reiki um, practitioner that was talking about uh, the imposter syndrome, I just want to kind of affirm to you that that, even just holding that space, that was so valuable. I loved that. I That was so powerful and great information. Um, and I love that. So to you. Um, gosh, as far as support, I mean, I feel like the last couple of weeks, we I've met so many new amazing people. And I think what I will need the most going forward is just to continue these relationships and to the, have the conversations. Contessa, was it you that I was having the conversation with uh, in the DMs or doc, is it Dr. Kimberly? Um, just giving valuable perspective um and conversation going forward to like check myself and um to provide perspective um and good ideas uh hanifa like becoming a colonel fellow yes i need to educate myself so just like shoving resources toward and like working together you know even if it's not formal but just continuing to be support for each other is everything that i'm looking for you know that we just keep building together because I think that's the most important thing. I remember my question. I'm going to say the question. I'm going to answer it myself and then pass it on to you all. Um, my question was simply, what has your experience been in this round of Gitcoin? Um, that's useful to know because um, uh, you should know, uh, uh, Colonel, at the end of the eight week fellowship, um, people who are wanting to build things because Colonel and Gitcoin are basically married at the hip. Um, Gitcoin is the is the funding uh, platform that is used, right? So this is and and what I would have I would have loved a forum like this in the beginning of my round of Colonel um, because when I applied in my round I didn't understand some things I got rejected, right? <laughs> so this so this is <laughs> informational for 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 everyone. So um I'm, my question is what has your experience as a DEI project been um in 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 Gitcoin? And um for me it's been um always a learning process um but what I've most appreciated about it is how all of the DEI uh, uh, grants or impact grants um, got together and created something we're calling the quadratic friends. So that's actually a hashtag now that trends. <laughs> so a friends is spelled F R E N S, right? Um, and and we also created a link. And, and I don't have it at my. Oh, actually, I do. Um, when everyone else talks, I put the link there, and that's where you can find all of the all the quadratic friends. And you can put us all in one big, big basket. Put a dollar to everyone's campaign and literally your dollars like at this point on average probably worth 50 to 75 dollars right um so know that what is it how many are we now 46 is that the number anyway so if you have like 50 bucks to spare give everybody a dollar and that will go such a long way all right um and I'll, I'll share that later but that has been the thing i have loved promoting each other's projects all the forums that we're creating, this being one of them, you know, Twitter spaces, um, the Telegram group, because um, we've had some trip ups along the way, some things we didn't understand, maybe I'm speaking for myself, that was also, um, you know, uh, clar got clarification around that, but that really only happened because we banded together. Yes, we're all pitching and shilling and trying to get as many donations as possible, but there is a power in coming together that, has truly been an experience for me, and 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 even to Contessa's uh, question to her, to her point, um, beyond this point, we're still quadratic friends, 
So yes, we're probably going to be in future Gitcoin grants, but now we're connected and we get to be witness to how everyone grows and support everyone along the way in ways that we can. So that's what I've really, really appreciated about um, this round of Gitcoin. Um, and I'm glad I got in this one because <laughs> the courtyard of credits are here. So, uh, the, so I, I just pose the same question to you all. What your experience is bad, then good or bad or both? Um, and just explain it a little bit. Okay. Uh, okay. Michael, you go first. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Tom. Um, I totally second what you said, Hanifa. Absolutely. The quadratic friends and the camaraderie and kind of the sense that we are going through this together and that we are purposefully, intentionally making sure that everyone is coming along together. That is so important. And I, my experience is that I've been drinking from a fire hose for two weeks. Like I literally beyond, so I used to be a financial planner. And so I had me a little crypto wallet, but I was looking at it purely from like a, an investment standpoint, I didn't understand what was being used for, what the ecosystems were. I didn't understand really anything. I was like, let me just play around and see if I can make some money with this little new new toy. But I didn't understand that it's so deep. And, and I had no idea. Um, so I've just been onboarding new information and I'm so super thankful for uh, our 40 acres, he basically came and found me and was like, okay, you get in here because you don't know what you're doing. Um, and that was great and a great source of resources. Um, and I just feel like there's so much more to learn and I'm a lifelong learner. And so I'm actually very excited to do like the kernel fellowship and to start learning what is going on with this coding and understand way more in depth. Um, and I was really excited to see how many like digital activists there are um my community is the activist community here and i'm like yes that's where we can get it like i was like okay i am an artist i love art so nfts are fascinating to me and the music as well that you are doing hanifa i love that but once i found out that people were like doing things doing things i was like yes this is my jam so so thankful to have found everyone and this whole thing that's happening. Yeah. Quadratic friends for life. <laughs> uh, yeah, to echo everyone, the community that I found in this process has been amazing, especially coming from being in the NFT community. And I've definitely found amazing people in that community as well, obviously Sabian being one of them. Um, but I have found that a lot of the time at its core, the NFT space is very much about making money and flipping. So it's actually been an incredible breath of fresh air and very um, fulfilling and affirming for me to find this space where people are just trying to help and they've got a mission, they've got a cause, they've got a purpose. It's really beautiful to see the different and creative ways people are leveraging this technology to solve real world problems and this the work that everyone is doing in in you know quadratic friends and and gitcoin at large this is the stuff that is going to excite and uh onboard people into the space not the buying you know a hip-hop ape <laughs> uh it's gonna be this cool stuff um that is actually solving <laughs> real problems so i've just personally felt very affirmed, if not very um, tired. And I will say the downside to this is I've been obsessed. I've been, I have ADHD, so I get hyper-focused and this has been a huge hyper-focus. And probably the the worst point was when, um, you know, not understanding exactly how it worked and seeing funds start to deplete and refreshing every minute was a little bit chaotic. But, you know, we live, we learn, um, we've, we've learned a lot from this process and definitely going into the next one with a solid community, a greater understanding of, um, how to make the most of it. And honestly, you know, we, we will have raised more funds in two weeks than we had in five months of the NFT, uh, project. So like, that's incredible. That's going to help actually, it's me and my wife on the couch with our dog in the middle, and we can actually grow a team now. So 
it's a huge, huge game changer for us um, as, as, you know, bootstrapping um, uh, over here. So yeah, that it's overall very, very amazing experience. And I'm glad that we have a great runway up to um, December with GR16 to like hit the, hit the ball out of the park even more. I actually want to talk a little bit about GR16 um, and what we can do as a quadratic friends and the issue with um, expanding the funding pool. But before I do that, we kind of, you both actually made a segue. Um, we actually were planning to have a third uh, quadratic friend here. I'm not sure uh, what happened to her, but that's okay. I'm just going to take this place a little bit because you guys kind of opened the door. Um, just so you know, my grant um, is both a collection um, and a new protocol. Uh, the collection is called Being Me Down Music. And the protocol is Beats uh, Per Mint. It is music oriented, um, but why it's in DEI, other than me being a black queer woman. <laughs> the, um, the reason why it's in DEI is the, I'm also referred to it as proof of time or a feminist infused um, protocol. Um, I, having a background um, in music uh, at this point, 30 years plus, um, when I came into the space, the first thing that excited but also worried me was how music was showing up. It was exciting on one hand because artists were getting these bags that is it, just it's unprecedented, other than getting an advance to a, um, you know, a record deal or something like that, and, and that's really a low, right? Um, so that's great. And, and a lot of artists who have the means to reinvest in themselves and, and the vision to reinvest in themselves, it really has set a, a solid foundation for, for them to launch their career, how they see fit, right? Um, unfortunately, um, what comes with that is a change in dynamic and a change in, par that, in, par in paradigm in a way that musicians have traditionally um, connected, f uh, found, and grown their fan base. Um, what also comes with that is a very thin skin and a lack of constructive criticism. What also comes with that is living bag to bag um, and not really setting up um, a monetary foundation that you can regularly have income coming in, right? Um, and also what comes with that is how do I onboard my Web2 fan base, which is still onboarding is, is tiresome, um, really, really hard. Um, if anything, if anything, dealing with people's suspicions is hard enough, right? So how do you disarm folks and, and welcome them in? I won't go into the minutia of how the protocol works. You can read the grant, which I'll post. Also, I'll be focusing specifically um, on, um, on uh, the protocol on Thursday with some other music projects. Um, and the collection, Being the Down Music, is simply embodies what the protocol, how the protocol will work, but it is um, a collection that fights for women's rights. Um, it came out of obviously Roe v. Wade uh, being taken away, and uh, it is using AR, so the full scope of Web3, not just NFTs, though it is an NFT project, um, the full scope of Web3, which includes the XRs, ARs, VR, all the Rs, right? <laughs> and so we're using AR um, in, uh, in uh, collaboration with Yvette Hammond, who's a timepiece artist, and we're creating these spaceships. It's kind of satirical in the sense of, you know, Everything's so fucked now, we need some alien intervention because humans don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> so basically it's a spaceship that beams down, it comes forward, it beams down music, and the, when the beam hits the ground or the music hits the ground, it wrecks um, or transforms that ground to something else. And how we're gonna use it in this, and I'll stop here, um, how, and I'm gonna talk more about this on Tuesday with Jasper James. Um, how we're gonna use it is, is really to, um, issuing a, a new era of protest and protesting that can make it more accessible um, and really um, introduce um, a little bit more political theater. And how we're gonna test it out is this uh, uh, coming month, October, I'm in Georgia. So we're gonna test it out by flying the spaceship. Um, it'll be the flagship, right? Because um, the collection is different derivatives of the same ship, right? In, in different music. So we're gonna take the flagship and some few songs that we're gonna fly it and capture it over the Georgia State Capitol, uh, the governor's mansion, um, all the HBCU, all the college campuses, basically. You know, and, and not for nothing over some projects. <laughs> you know, um, to get out the, the black vote, get out the democratic vote and get out the youth vote. Um, uh, in support of women's rights, yes, but you all know that that is connected to all of our rights. Um, so it's not about where you issue understand it's a bigger issue that we're trying to uh, beat back 
um, and use that um, throughout October leading up to the elections and hope that we can make some um, impact um, and help on the Web3 end. Because like we were saying earlier, you know, people who aren't in this space, if they've heard of Web3 or NFTs, they think of board apes or it's always a money opportunity, right? I'm gonna make some money. <laughs> and <laughs> what I love about Gitcoin is that this, it's, we say it's an investment, but not an investment you're going to get a monetary return in. It's an investment in building out the space in your own image of what you want to see in the space so that more and more folks, when they hear of Web3, or when they hear of NFTs or anything else that's associated with Web3, they think about, oh, how can I do, what can I do, not what money can I make, right? Or, or in addition to what money can I make, what can I do? What impact can I have? How does this reflect what I'm already doing in the world and how can Web3 accelerate that? That's really the conversation that the quadratic friends are trying to have as opposed to you pay some money, you know? Um, Cause I think that has really, that's hurt the music community. That's, helped, that's hurt so many communities that's come into this space and not for the hurt Web3, that's come into this space and you know, what, what one out of 10 projects actually do something. I would say 0.5 out of 10 projects do something. So they either get rugged they lose their money or they get they get uh, they bump it to scams. So the story that they tell folks is oh that 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 whole thing is on BS. It's BS, you know, because they came in it, you know, putting their money on the line, right? And then they're told, well, you did it wrong. Or that, you know, that that's not no, nah, nah, we're not trying to do that again. Not again. Um, so that is the quadratic friends. That's what I'm trying to bring in. That's what Mike is trying to bring in, that's what Pap is trying to bring in. Contessa is going to be here tomorrow. That's what she's trying to bring in. And everyone that I'm um, presenting here over the next three days um, is trying to issue in. Um, now, I just wanted to bring it back um, to the things that we discovered during this, uh, this uh, funding uh, round that I learned as well. Um, and so this is overall education for those who may be um, uh, applying for Gitcoin, this idea of depleting funds, right? <laughs> Um, uh, a, few, a couple of days ago, y'all saw me in the telegram, like, what the hell? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm riding the, the wave um, of, you know, each donation and seeing that the number going up. And then one day I got like nine smaller donations. And so I started to wake up and see my numbers completely excel, but it went down by a couple of hundred dollars. I'm like, <laughs> you know, and at first it was explained to me, oh, you know, um, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's, a, it's a competition, you know, so if someone else is getting more donations to you, it may divert. But I saw the, the numbers that are in the red or in the green, that that number can go up and down. So that number is never locked in. It's not yours until it's over. And so it is a competition. <laughs> so it, it, it pushes you to keep getting donations, keep getting donations. And on Thursday is when that number is the actual number. And so um, I did learn something because I definitely was going off. <laughs> I was like, how are you going to divert my phone? My people gave me money. How are you going to divert my phone to who? Who's getting it? You know, <laughs> you know, it's another quadratic front of somebody else, <laughs> you know? So I, I'm curious, you know, you know, I know, uh, Pap, you went through that um, as well. And, you know, maybe you can just talk a little bit about it. Yeah just the same as you um after after seeing so I'll, I'll backtrack um i put my application in at like 3 a.m on the day it went live on the 7th of september so it took about three or four days for us to even get approved and in that time i was seeing like blue dow just take over the world and they were hitting insane numbers and i was like oh my god we need to start so we started and we started seeing some really good traction and we got to about like 60 um, or so contributors and it was hitting like $9,000. And I literally got my whiteboard out and I was like, right, if we keep going on this trajectory, we could get like 30K and what can we do with that money? And I was really starting to like feel the fantasy um, and just like, wow, this is gonna completely transform this little bootstrapped operation take us to the level that we deserve to be to create the impact we want to create um so then when it started slowing down um a couple days later and not quite understanding why and then seeing it go down um was definitely quite heartbreaking and um had to take a bit of time to 
like step away, get back into nature and just recenter because right now we have just over like 10.5 grand, which is amazing. And I am still amazed and humbled by that. We have like 127 contributors now. Um, but, you know, at one point I was like, oh my gosh, it could be this much. So I had to just like take that time um, to, you know, realize that because of the, 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 um, the cap at 150 grand in the DEI round, and I'm also in Polygon, so that is like 100 grand, um, you know, that, that had been kind of depleted. So it was a really good learning experience. I think what I am very like bullish on now is how can we get that higher? Because we are the ones building the shit that matters. Like, I don't really want another protocol that's like going to transform the email subscription industry. I don't care about that. You know what I mean? I want something that's going to help our people. So now I'm like, okay, 150 grand obviously is not enough because we got halfway through and then we've capped it. Um, we have shown that we have like incredible talent, um, incredible diverse people building real shit. So yeah, I think what I'm really excited about now is like getting that megaphone out and getting other NFT projects, other protocols. Like I want to see big names backing the DEI rounds in GR16 because like we deserve it. So yeah, it's definitely put fuel um, on, on my feet to do as much campaigning as I can. Um, so we can continue to grow this because, you know, we've, I'm sure all of us have onboarded so many people into the space who have um, funded our uh, project, who have their own ideas that also deserve funding, but we need to grow that pool so we can all like rise together. You you actually jumped in. I was going to say that 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 I think that's something that quadratic friends can really um, petition. Um, that you know we're uh, above fifty uh, k, and that's cool. You know, um, but like you said, our go to is to bring more people in to this space. So we know that GR sixteen is going to be off the chain with DEI grants. So a buck fifty is not going to cut it. It's just not. You need to double that at least, at least. Okay. Even thank you. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know. Uh, so I, I think we're. I think when we all take a day off after Thursday, because I think we're all going to need it. I don't know about you, but I am whooped. <laughs> Um, I think coming back behind the scenes to actually do a campaign to make sure that happens because Gitcoin feels like the kind of place that you can a little bit of pressure, a little bit of a push, you know, um, then, you know, that can um, happen. Um, also, you spoke to something that um, I think is important and I'm going to ready myself um, for GR16 is coming in with a community ready to pay, ready to drop a buck. Because then you can go, like, that's what Blue Dow had. They have a huge community and they all said, Oof, and they went up <laughs> like to 30,000 in the first couple of days, right? Um, I said, like, oh, oh my goodness, oh, okay, right? <laughs> you know, and then we have you, like you have a strong community. And, and that is something that I didn't, I mean, I have a community. I don't necessarily have all their emails, you know, <laughs> like that, you know? Um, and also a lot of my community is outside of web three so it's a little bit tedious every single person i have to almost onboard you know to get get a, a dollar five you know some of them really generous whatever right um so that's something to really understand in coming into this um uh also getting in as many rounds as possible to thwart that issue um i did luck out where i'm not just in dei well actually took a minute for me to get in dei but i'm not just in dei i'm also in the main round i'm also in polygon and I'm also an unlock protocol. So if you are interested in building a protocol, right? Um, obviously it's open source and for public good. Um, you might want to holler at them because where they can help maximize your Gitcoin grant, it makes me actually feel a little bit better because I still have not reached my real goal, is that they will uh, match it times two. So whatever I raise uh, via quadratic uh, funding, they're going to uh, double it essentially, right? So and not for nothing, they're just a great group of folks and they have a great protocol that my protocol is gonna be built on top of. Um, so I just wanna uh, put that out there. Um, okay, <laughs> I'll be right back, I'm emailing. <laughs> Unlock protocol, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, Micah, you wanna say something? Um, I, 
I'm not sure, but I don't think it actually quite works like that because if you have the unlock protocol tag, like you have the polygon tag, um, their $25,000 pool is included in what is already showing on your matching. I'm pretty sure I might be wrong, but you might want to double back because I just don't want, I know it's been like very disappointing like seeing how the quadratic funding actually works. I just want to make sure that there isn't another disappointment. So double, maybe double back and check. Do you know what I mean? I just am like, I want everybody to know. I know they have a cap. I know that they have a cap. So, you know, right. um, so uh, so I am competing with other unlock uh, uh, grantees that I'm aware of. Okay. And then I think actually to put it out there, if you are going to build a protocol, you can actually apply directly to unlock protocol for individual grants. So just to kind of put that out there, there's other funds. And there was a conversation about the fact that until now, it's been that your grant, you receive the funds after you actually show proof of work. But I brought up the fact that I felt like that was an accessibility issue for a lot of people who don't have money to sit back and like make something while they don't get paid. And so for DEI, there is a possibility that there will be an accelerated front end um, receiving of funds so that if you receive their grant, you get some money up front to start building. So you're not sitting there trying to make your life uh, for free. I mean, I feel like I can I can show proof of work because um, we're working in the background as well. But I didn't know that. So yeah. And so I want to talk a little bit about kind of the process for me because I came into this like last minute. I didn't even know I was going to have a project. I had forgotten about Gitcoin. So I'm like hurrying up. I got my project together, submitted my grant. It took a minute to get approved. I didn't even know about the tags. You know, fortunately, because of Qu Quadratic Friends, I was able to get to the DEI tag and the climate tag uh, for my project. But then I found out like the other people that are involved in my grant weren't even going to be a part of the crowdfunding. And so the burden was on me to do all this myself and the panic that I had because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You know, this is my first time doing something like this. And I only have so much capacity. There is no way that I can do all this by myself, plus all the other things that I'm responsible to do on a daily basis. So very glad for Quadratic Friends, but thinking about GR16, I can, together as a group, we can come up with kind of like a strategy that we can all use so that it's not as stressful. So we're not staying up all night. So we're not having these anxiety attacks about our grants. You know, being able to, uh, you know, create series of blogs and having everybody to have access to it. You know, being able to, if you don't know how to put up a website really quick, here's a template that you could use. Here are like 50 podcasts that you can be on leading up to it all these things we can do ahead of time. I don't even have a community because this is so brand new. People's like, Contessa, we didn't even know that you were doing this shit. I didn't know either. Um, and so these are things that we can do to help each other in the future. And I'm so looking forward to like, I'm thankful for every single, you know, contribution to my project but i'm really looking forward to the next time because i know that i will be prepared and shh, ain't gonna be no stopping me next time you know I, I, we're gonna hit this thing running and people are gonna be like these quadratic friends or something else they just came out the door and knock his shit over and that's what i want to see for us and i'm really excited about that oh my gosh sis i it's all about GR16. Though I, I'm appreciative of what I've been able um, to raise, um, because that actually is going to jumpstart. It's, it's, it's less than what. Well, you know what? It's not over. First of all, but <laughs> but whatever the whatever the number is, I know that I was like, okay, I can still get stuff done 
you know, to make it happen with that. So I'm good. And it's not the only grant, not the only Web3 grant that I'm gonna for, you know. Um, like Gitcoin is not the end all be all, it's just an interesting way to raise money, you know. Um, but oh my gosh, like I'm talking about, like I am gonna be, like GR16 starts Friday, okay, next Monday. <laughs> You know, and I think it'd be really cool if, like, even if quadratic friends have um, a Twitter account, that as we are going about our day, we're always promoting this Twitter account and why we're promoting it. Um, so when GR16 comes around, like, that is the, the account that is going to be dishing out all of the content, you know, to support um, all the grants who are quadratic friends. So, I mean, I think that you're right. There's so much that we can do. So I look forward to building, you know, with this community to really set us up for um, everyone to just blow it out the water. I mean, we're gonna be com competing with each other, but that's all right, because we're also going to be trying to get that cap raised. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, come on. Um, yes, I'm excited. You want to say something, Maika? Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, okay. So we're a little bit competing with each other, um, but if we focus on increasing that pool, that's really where we need to put our energy and still stick together. Like, I know that it, like there were some questions raised, like, does it make sense to try to onboard other people because it dips into your pocket? And I'm like, yes, it does. It absolutely makes sense. We will bring everybody with us. We all ships rise together. So we will make the pool bigger and go up together. We're not gonna play that weird game where you like leave some people out. What, why? Yeah, yeah, that's capitalism speaking, and that's and no, that's you. You know, in this space. People have still have one foot in, in 20th century capitalism, but the rhetoric speaks of something else, right? So that that fear that oh, you know, someone's going to take away from me instead of thinking, well, if we get more people, they know we need more money, right? It's and, absolutely and fear. And I think fear. That deserves to be acknowledged because the reason why people have fear is because we're in freaking late stage capitalism. It's, I mean, there's scary shit. So of course they're scared. But if we lift each other up and you guys know this, I'm preaching the choir, but you know, let's go up together because we'll just make more pie. And I think one of the, even in addition to being getting the cap raised, um, I think just take it, <laughs> pardon the pun, but taking up more space in Gitcoin and not just putting folks over in the corner with the DEI. Um, I, I have a problem with that in general. I know it's a way to find us, but <laughs> but I'm, I'm more um, excited about changing the conversation overall with Web3. What is prioritized in this space? You well, know, I did I notice right off the top that the DEI pool outside of the protocols, it was the smallest pool. And I was like, okay, it's cool that we're gonna have this as a cause round every time, but you're kind of giving the smallest piece over here. So like, what's that about? I would like to see that 500,000. Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's what people, that's that's was their expectation. I mean, we're on the 15th round, it's the first time they had DEI in it, I'm just saying, right? So, you know, at the end of the day, the you have this great idea but those who are behind the idea still have to get over their shit, you know, and, and their biases, you know. And a good way to do that is to bum rush the show. <laughs> what <Yes. is> us? <laughs> it's like, oh, by the way, did you did you not know that in fact we are not the minority? No. It's going to be a global. <laughs> okay, well, I love you. This is going to be a global initiative. We call Web Three. You, in fact, are going to be the minority. So, if you're if you want to back up the rhetoric, you have to support the actual vision. Support the rhetoric with those who are actually willing to do the work towards that vision, as opposed to speaking one thing and doing another. Um. Equity, okay, okay, cool. Um, but you know, it's interesting because you know, uh, I remember I was in Forty Acres. I'm just using it as an example. I love my brothers, but one time, you know, they would they were organizing something. I'm just using it as an example um, in Austin, um, and um, they were organizing a series of panels, and it was panels over different, you know, topic matters in Web three, and then it was like the LGBT, uh, the Alphabet City panel, and the Women's panel. I said, well. And then they, they will question, like, we need more women in 40 acres. It's like, okay, well, the first thing you want to do is don't section off people. Just have topics about Web3 and make sure those who are on the panel are diversified, 
as opposed to putting us over there in the corner. What I'm gonna talk about? I said, I don't even talk about no, no, no gay stuff. I've been gay for 50 years. I don't, I don't what? What am I gonna talk about? They got anything to do with Web3 other than inclusion. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, y'all been a woman for 50 years. 50 years. <laughs> Come on. Well, man. I was a financial planner for eight years and I would almost always be the only woman at everything. And that must got so awkward. I was like, never in my life have I ever made an investment decision with any of my genitals. Like, why is that even part of the conversation? That is not what's happening. And it was so backward because they had all of us having our retreat. And my partner went into the women's group for the wives and they were asking him some very awkward questions. I was like, what planet am I on? And you know, yes. Why do we, why is that's not what we're talking about here? We're talking about web three and none of that is determined by your sexuality, period. Like other than the fact that there needs to be more representation, but the actual work, that's no, that's my opinion. I might be wrong, Pass. You tell me. <laughs> no, but changing that dynamic, I think is a part, is always going to be the side work of whatever our projects are, you know, or at least, it's a byproduct of what our projects produce is again changing the conversation in this space um because i have little tolerance um for a lot of the conversations and i've been in it since 21 and trust me girl i came in just kicking down the door like y'all all talking shit and they just hate me i got kicked out of wrong so y'all i said i don't hear all that ah I <laughs> I said, I, I said, I, I was a full grown adult with Web One, and I've heard this same rhetoric about, oh, it's a even playing field now. We all ain't gonna make it together, you know, all of that, you know. <laughs> and what winds up happening at the end? Because you know what, you really can't help yourself. You really can't help yourself. So I don't want to hear all this. What are you doing? I said, we will talk once you show me what you're doing. Before that, you're wasting my time. And people used to get so up in arms about that like one thing you'll appreciate this path I was in a clubhouse room and um people i don't know what the topic was but people were really excited this is i mean this is like top euphoria time of web3 top even before board apes everybody like oh my gosh right but everyone was referring everyone talking or rather the, the men in particular the white men talking kept using bro kept using guy kept using man kept you i said can we just hold up i said if 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 you're serious about changing the dynamic, let's start with language, because language is everything. Language is everything. I said, everyone in here is not a man, a guy, or a bro, all right? So if you are about inclusion, you, you, not what I need to do, what you need to do is begin the practice of changing your language, start there. It's a little bit difficult, but guess what? You will learn a lot through that difficulty. And welcome to the club. You know, and, and you know, and then, you know, and I got kicked out of rooms by saying there needs to be more black collectors here who actually could see the art and know what the hell they're looking at and place value on more black artists, more women artists, more women collectors. Got kicked out the room, girl. So that that's is the extension a, of your that's the extent of your hardship is that we're asking you to change the word bro. <laughs> Cry me a freaking river and get past that, like. What? That's no. why I have it on my. I literally have it. I my, saw that my Twitter account because I'm like I. I said as soon as you do it, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off whatever you're saying and just correct you. I correct you when you mispronounce my name. I was like, who are you talking to? That is hilarious. There was a you know? Point, and you know because I'm in a lot of refi spaces, which is a lot of white men in these spaces and are talking about all this great work that they're doing in the rainforest and all of this stuff and going in all these places and how they're coming there and 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 and, and talking to the indigenous people and creating all these currency and this like that i was like this sounds like crypto colonialism to me and the look on their face i'm like did you talk to the people there do they even understand what's going on do they ask for this shit? like what are you doing you're just colonizing another space we have to stop doing this y'all are ridiculous and they're just patting themselves on their back and i was like absolutely not do you see what you are doing? 
Trump's that that reminds me of uh, when uh, um, some white organizers would come to the all the protests in 2020, in summer 2020, and take over shit. Like, they just say, you, just follow orders. We got, we follow direction. Don't give direction. This is not the space for you to give direction. And like you're saying, it's that colonial mind state that has to shift. Technology is not going to do that. Technology only dares us to change. You have to change yourself so you have better clarity. How you, if you care about the rainforest, then you empower the people who actually freaking live there. Empower them, not just with money, not just charity. If they don't have the understanding of the technology, then you do that, and then that's the end of your job. And maybe counteract any, uh, if you can help counteract any resistance, traditional resistance they may have, that's something else you can do too. But the actual work, needs to be done by the people who are there. Come on. I was going to say props to Web3 Beach because of what they're doing in that island off of Honduras because they are doing exactly that. Yeah, you don't go and like tell people what they need. You work with what's already there. And actually, you guys were saying earlier um, that people are going to see what is happening in Gitcoin and get excited. I was at some friend's house last night and all of a sudden there's conversations about how can we get like clean water in the Pueblos and like all of this. And I'm like, hold up. What we're going to do is go over to this Natives in Tech DAO and we're going to see what they're dripping to because they're already dripping a project. So what we want to do is give them more money, feed it because it's already there. We don't need to re, like you said, reinvent the wheel for what? Like just give the right people the funding and elevate them. I've been talking about natives in tech DAO because we, because I live basically in Tiwa territory. And so we give land acknowledgements here. We say, this is the land we're standing on. Doesn't actually belong to us. We just, mm, colonialism. And that's what I'm excited for quadratic friends to be a part of changing that, that uh, confronting and changing that 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 dynamic. like you said, I'm sure you were like, oh, you were like, oh my God, stop, just stop, 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 stop. You can't even, you can't even hear yourselves because you're not used to even listening to yourself. You know, you want to, you know, you hear yourself, but you don't listen to yourself. <laughs> you know, um, so it's, it's, I, I just want to say, as someone who was in this space when there was a lack of women and a lack of black of BIPOC folks and a lack of queer folks, it feels so good. To have more people in this space that's about it. No, for real, for real. Because I was that I was that angry black bitch, for real. <laughs> no, I'm just keeping 100. And I didn't care. I didn't care because it had to be said. You know, I'm not gonna let you just free flow what you think is right when I'm letting you know <laughs> that you're not. I'm gonna tell you not. I'm gonna tell you why. You wanna hear why? Okay, good. Let me tell you. <laughs> you know. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we are winding down. Thank you, Savior, for staying all the way through. Thank you, Feline. Feline is always so supportive. Um, so just so you know, the, um, all the links are in the chat um, to everyone's grant individually. And also I put the Quadratic Friends uh, kind of uh, you know search link. So all of us in one space, also all the DEI projects in one space, those links are in there too. If you want to like, put everybody in the basket and give them a buck, boom, that really is dope. Um, and please spread the word. I'm, I'm going to stop the streaming. Before I do that, anyone who is watching the streaming, haven't checked in actually, who is watching the streaming, one employer to do the same thing. Um, just share this, uh, the, um, the video, the YouTube link, um, once we stop streaming, um, so more folks see our faces, um, and not just hear our voices, um, who was actually behind this? Because a lot body language says it all. There's one thing you can't hide behind is body language. It will always give you away. It gives your truth, you know. Um, so and you can't hide your truth. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so that's why I wanted to do more of a video format and then be able to share it. So I'll, I'll also when I download all of this, I'll put all the things um, in the uh, in the Telegram as well, so we can um, push it. All right. And any other last comments, um, Path, Maika, Contessa, Sabian, Feline, anyone? I know Feline's uh, resting her voice. She's not going to speak, but yeah. Just thank you so much for organizing this. And I love that, like, you just put, like, four people 
who are super passionate about like creating change and we get to colonialism and we're like, yeah. So I think we need to do a part two and dive into that. Um, but yeah, just super, super grateful for everyone's support um, and excited to yeah come back, come back stronger with a bigger pool for GR16. It's going to happen. Yeah, and I can't read sign language. It's for Sabian. Oh. I said bye, even though my finger spelling is terrible. Beautiful, um, beautiful. Um, so let's leave each other now. This has been a great time. We are going to be here for the next three days at 2 p.m. Um, introducing more um, incredible uh, grants and initiatives um, that we want to support. And like them, we're going to stream it. Uh, one thing I, I am going to um, investigate is how to just privatize it a little bit more so we don't have those interruptions we had in the beginning. And again, I apologize for that. Wasn't aware that was a thing when you make it public. <laughs> but you know, I guess Zoom deals with it. Uh, obviously, Google is going to deal with it, right? <laughs> I have to contend with it anyway. But anyway, that that being said, um, I really um, uh, thank you all for spending the time and, and yeah, and days to go. And uh, yeah, let's do it, y'all. I'm excited. All right, y'all, friends in the house. Again, thank you, Savi and Feline. Blessings. Please spread the word. We'll be back here tomorrow at 2 p.m. All right, y'all. <laughs>